Hey y'all, this is uh, Buck Baskin with AdultBibleStudyCurriculum.com and in this lesson on small group dynamics we're going to talk about seating arrangements. Uh, it may seem like a little thing, uh, but when it comes to small groups, actually seating arrangements can make the biggest difference in um, how people learn, whether or not they feel engaged or included in the lesson, and whether they feel comfortable. And then of course from that, you know, want to return and come again the next time, which really should be our goal as we try to grow our groups. Um, this really, like I said, plays a part with, with small groups. Um, um, and, and there's just a few things uh, that you really want to look into. Um, this isn't that complicated, and some of the stuff's going to seem obvious, but there's just a few things that you really want to think about as you arrange your group. Now, here's the thing. Uh, you want to think about inclusive seating. All right, You want everyone to feel included. Um, I like to look at it this way. Let's say you know you got a group of kids, and you're, you've got them in a circle, and you're going to sit on the mat you know, for story time. And if you circle everyone up, and then one, one kid gets left out and sat, sits outside the circle, how are they going to feel? Right? They're going to feel left out. They're going to they're gonna, you know, feel um, abandoned. And we don't want that. So when you are setting up your small group, um, you want to think about that. Now, if you have to do rows, you know, that's fine, but maybe try and, you know, make sure everyone sits at the front so one person's not off in the back corner. If you're going to do a circle, like around a table maybe, make sure everyone gets in the table. Even if that means the group grows so much, you have to move away from the table. Don't let one person drift out to the side. So the number one thing in seating is we want to make sure it's inclusive, that when we're seating people that they feel welcomed and that they don't feel left out and there's not one, you know, drifter or straggler that's off by themselves. The other thing we want to think about is we want to intimidate with our seating. This comes in more to play, like let's say if you're meeting in a home um, or, uh, you know, for, for your small groups. If everyone else is going to sit around the floor and you're going to hang out, now granted with adults, this may not happen that much. If they're going to sit on the ground, you don't want to sit up in a chair. Because this just shows that you're kind of looking down on them and you think they're better than them. Um, and, and you don't want that because that just kind of can make them feel demeaning. It can, can hinder discussion and, and a lot of other issues can come up with that. So we don't want to intimidate with the way we see people. So if they're on the ground, be on the ground with them. Now granted, if they're in chairs and you like to sit up and walk around, I'm that way. I like to move when I teach, then that's fine. But really think through and make sure that you're not intimidating or looking like you're trying to be up and above them. I know some of y'all think, well, hey, that shows me that and authority as a teacher. Trust me, just the role you're playing is going to kind of give that sort of look of authority so you really don't have to worry about doing anything more uh, to add on to that. A couple other things we want to think about here as we start to wrap up is one, do the best you can with a seating arrangement. Don't beat yourself up over it. Um, so certain rooms, certain situations as groups grow or small or how many seats you have, the home you meet in, there's only so much you can do. So just do the best you can and, and, and the whole time, you know, be, be learning. And, and like I said, try to think through ways you can maybe make things better. Maybe bringing in extra chairs, getting a bigger room, getting a smaller room. Just a lot of things you want to think through. So do the best you can and always be looking to grow. And the final thing I would say is just be aware of your surroundings. Uh, one of the biggest things with seating that I find is, is you can do some things beforehand but it's more about once you get going. You need to be aware of what's happening. Um, you know, as one person come in and they're in the corner and everybody else, you know, they're brand new and everyone else that's been there for a while is up front. Um, and, and so you want to be aware of your surroundings, of what's happening. You know, as you walk in the room, just kind of scan how things could play out and go, do I need to remove some chairs? Do I need to rearrange some things? You know, just do that. So like I said, watch for how people seem to be reacting, how they seem to be seating themselves. And if you can, be aware of what the room looks like so you can do some preventative maintenance. Okay, this seems like a little thing I'm sure to some of y'all and some of this is obvious, but trust me, it makes a huge thing. And so as you as you do this, as you continue to teach, um, just be aware of these things in your small groups and, and make sure that you're seating in such a way that people feel comfortable, that they feel welcome, and that they're more likely to become engaged in discussion and grow and kind of experience that life change that we want people to teach as we teach our adult Bible study curriculums.